Alright everybody, we are here for the start of Season 3. We've got two great seasons in the books. Uh, we've had a couple of great <clears throat> sets of races that we've pulled off with uh, Jon Snow being our original champion. And then last season we had Mike Wojcik was our champion. Um, both times those guys won by a pretty narrow margin and the competition was stiff all the way through the season so we're looking forward to more of that here with season three we've got a a full field of cars we're looking at 25 cars for tonight uh, this is race one we're here at Barcelona we have um, <clears throat> a lot of new drivers and some drivers whose names I don't know how to pronounce so we're gonna be doing our best to get through that. Uh, I'm going to also try to remember some of the guys who I can pronounce. i got to try to remember their names uh, because there's quite a few new people and uh, we got to get all that squared away. Over the next couple weeks we'll smooth those things out and we've got uh, a lot of people in new cars this season also. Uh, Mike Wojcik, let's see if we can get a look at it. No, it's view is obstructed. He's in the McLaren this season. Uh, David Macedo, he is in, see if we can get a view of it. He is in the BMW M4 this season. Uh, Moto, of course, is in the Porsche as always. Mike Doherty has moved into the new Audi. So we got Mike in the Audi. Of course, the view just doesn't want to cooperate. We'll get better looks at these cars throughout the race. Uh, Kyle Macedo is still in the McLaren. Pedro is still in the Bentley. We got one of our new drivers, Eve Barrios. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Or Barrios, I'm not sure. Uh, he is in the Ferrari. Uh, Mr. North, Ken North, is in the Lamborghini this season. So that's a new new car for him he was in the BMW I believe last season uh, we got another new driver don't know the first name uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Peaks we're gonna call him Peaks I don't know how you pronounce that P-E-I-X-E -E. so I'll find out once I actually get to talk to him I haven't gotten to talk to him yet how to properly pronounce that name but we'll we'll get that we got another new driver in uh, on Andrew Cooper, he's new also. Then we've got another new driver in Gabriel Macedo. He's in the Mercedes. Uh, Andrew is in the McLaren. Uh, let's see, Stefan Buckley's in a new car this season. He's driving the new Audi. Uh, last season he was in the BMW also. DJ Young is also in the Audi. I'm trying to remember what car DJ was driving. I think DJ was driving a Porsche last season, if I remember properly. Uh, so as you might know, uh, these guys, once they race the first race of the season in these cars, the championship locks them into those cars. So they are stuck with this car for the entire season. So we always set up events so they can practice, get used to driving the cars. That way there's no surprises when the season starts but hopefully all these guys will be happy with their choices uh, we've got Jamie Morrison behind those guys he's in the BMW uh, pretty sure he was in the BMW last season also we've got Nick Dreibman who's in the Honda and Nick was in I believe he was in the McLaren last season so that's a new ride for him also in the Honda. Uh, another new driver, Cavilla. He's in the Ferrari. And uh, if you can look back towards the middle back there, he's the white one with the red across the hood. So that's Cavilla. Cole Bennett is in the Audi. Let's see a couple of guys goes through each other there. Scott Taylor still in the Ferrari. Eric Tong is in the Audi, or in the, uh, excuse me, in the Honda this season. He was in the, I think 
think he was actually in the Audi last season, if I remember properly. At some point, Eric drove a, an Audi. I can't remember if it was last season or the season before, so I'll have to try to remember that. Evan Miller, he's in the Audi. Uh, I believe he was in the BMW last season. James Parks is in the McLaren. Silva, don't know first name for Silva, but he's in the Porsche. And I have spent too much time and missed the start of the race, so we are going to we are going to restart the race. Let's go back. Okay, so everybody's formed up. We're ready for the start of the race here. 25 cars on the track. It's a pretty loaded field, as you'll see. Um, it's pretty intimidating seeing that many cars that close together, as you'll see here in just a minute. John Snow and Mike Wojcik leading them down. There's the green flag, and they are off and racing. And these guys are moving and bobbing and weaving, doing a great job. You see David Macedo kind of show his nose a little bit in between the leaders, but then backs off. Alex Moto on the outside. Macedo follows him around the outside. Wojcik takes the lead from John Snow. Got a better start than John. John got a little bit of a slow start there. Let's check back through the pack. There's a lot of people side-by-side -side racing right now. Here's Mike Doherty side-by-side -side with David Macedo. Alex Moda holding on to third for the moment. And you see Kyle Macedo looking to the inside of David, not able to hold on to that spot. Right behind him is Eve Barrios. He's right there. Pedro Perez is right on his heels also. Side by side behind that is um, Peaks and Gabriel Macedo. These guys are all close, 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 close together. Trying to sort it out and get everybody straightened out a little bit here so they can settle into their race. We got Ken North in the Lamborghini. See how tight the pack is right now trying to get around this track good clean racing by everybody so far let's take a look back at the front so we've got John Snow uh oh we lost we lost Wojcik where did Wojcik go Wojcik was in first oh no and Wojcik has a disconnect he is gonna lose connection from the server and he is going to be out of the race really really unfortunate for Mike you know Mike was our champion last season and you see that's what happens when it disconnects right there he just goes airborne car flies off into oblivion and then disconnects so that's going to give John Snow the lead John was he qualified first he was the fastest guy in practice and qualifying so John had, was the odds-on favorite to win this race. Having Wojcik out like that is going to give him an even better chance of winning this race. But there's a lot of racing left to go. So we'll see what he's able to do with Moda. You know, Alex has gotten better and better since he's been with us in that Porsche. Seems to get a little faster, you know, race after race. So he's done really well. Mike Doherty, we know he's always fast. He's in third right now, but he's dealing with David Macedo. He's got David all over him. And then shortly behind that, you see Eve uh, Barrios, one of our new drivers. He's all the way up into sixth place, so he's having a really good race. Uh, we don't really know anything about him. Uh, never talked to him. He uh, just showed up tonight, so we're kind of gonna have to get to know these guys as the weeks go by but he's he's doing well he's in the Ferrari in front of Kyle Macedo and Pedro Perez see him run a little bit wide there but he's able to double back keep momentum another one of our new drivers who's doing well is Gabriel Macedo he's up here in eighth place holding off some fast drivers. He's in front of Stefan Buckley, Ken North, uh, 
some pretty fast guys there. Uh, Ken North, especially last season, was really, really competitive all season in the top five, pretty much. So Gabriel and uh, I keep forgetting how I was going to pronounce this name. Peaks, I guess Peaks is what we're going with. Uh, he's in ninth place, and then Stephon Buckley's rounding out the top ten in the Audi. So he's doing pretty good. Stefan is a pretty fast driver. We've had we've had a lot of races with him now. He's been with us for I think he was with us for either one full season or the majority of last season. I can't remember exactly when he came onto the scene, but uh, he's shown a lot of speed since he's been with us. And Ken was really really fast last season in the BMW. Of course, getting used to a new car. You know, so many of these guys are getting used to new cars and. They might not be as, as good right now as they will be at the end of the season once they've kind of got that car dialed in. If you've never raced on ACC, um, every car is extremely unique. So when you get used to one car and you kind of figure out the ins and outs of that car and then you switch, it's, it's like playing a completely different game. It's like a whole new simulator because the cars handle completely different, they feel different, the, feedback is different, everything's different, and it, it takes a long time to get used to a car, so it's a pretty bold move for these guys to be changing changing cars um, season to season, but a lot of guys have changed cars every season, so you see Eric run a little bit wide there, he's able to keep his momentum, you see Cavilla right on him right now in that white Ferrari. Parks. Uh, he's currently running in 19th right now, one of our new drivers. He's in front of Evan Miller, and Evan, he's, Evan's a good driver, so he's doing good if he's in front of Evan. That's pretty good right there. You know, for these guys in the middle of the pack, <clears throat> you know, some of them are probably racing. You see Moda is keeping pace with Snow the best he can. The lead right now is at 1.3 seconds. Um, we all know how fast John is. Anybody who's been around this league knows that John is an uh, extremely consistent driver. He's hard to beat. He seems to get better as the race goes on, as the tires wear, you know, everything. As, as the car adjusts to the race, John just seems to get better. So he's extremely hard to beat in this kind of situation where he's out in the front. But only takes one mistake. One mistake and Moda will be all over him or past him. So Moda's just got to run his race right now. So there's Moda in second. Mike Doherty's still in third with David Macedo still right behind him. So that's a good battle going on still for third place right now. You see Mike look like he got a little bit slow through that turn there. Macedo gets right up on him. Mike was extremely dominant in the uh, in the Aston Martin for season one, which is arguably one of the harder cars to drive. It, it struggles for low end power, and so coming out of corners and, and coming out of like chicanes and stuff, a lot of people struggle really bad with that car because it struggles for that low end acceleration. But Mike had it figured out. He he was hard to beat and always in the top three. Really really good in the Aston Martin, and then. For season two, he uh, let's take a ride on board with Macedo here. See what he's seeing from his perspective. But you know, then Doherty switched to the BMW last season, and he was every bit as good. I don't think he won quite as many races as he did in season one, but I think that's also because the competition got stiffer. Our league has gotten faster uh, from season to season, and you can see that. Uh, see David get a little bit loose right there coming off the bumper. 
but um, the league has gotten faster. You can see that tonight, how fast some of the guys in the middle of the pack are, how consistent they are, and they're still in 10th, 12th place, something like that, because the front guys are just so quick. Um, so as, an, as a league, we have gotten faster and faster over the course of these several months. You see Mike a little, a little bit wide on the turn there. It's going to let Macedo get right up to him again. Yeah, Mike's, it looks like Mike is a little soft through the corners. It's allowing David to kind of get inside of him, get underneath him, and, and get through the corners a little quicker on these slow speed corners. Could be a tire pressure thing, could be a setup thing. You see Mike. The thing about Mike though is car placement is great. He always keeps his car where it's supposed to be for the most part. And so you see him see him running a little bit wide there again. I think he's just struggling a little bit with this car in these slow corners. You see Macedo's just eating him up in the slow sections. All over. He's holding its own on the stretch, though, on the front stretch. Some people were talking about that car, you know, with it being a new car, that it would struggle on the straightaways because it was more about downforce. But uh, seemed to handle the BMW pretty well on the straight right there, so showing some straight line speed. Of course, a lot of that has to do with setup, you know, how you have the car set up with downforce and everything. Appears that David just has more pace through the slow turns, but Mike is getting through some of the faster sections. Whoa, David almost took Mike out right there. Really close to a big accident. And that is going to cause problems for David because he's got Kyle Macedo and Pedro Perez. They both just blew past him. So, Kyle Macedo, let's see that again when we go back. So he's coming back onto the track. He slows down and lets these guys go, which is a good move by him because he's he's not on pace right now. So he lets those guys go. That's going to give Mike Doherty some breathing room for Mike to be able to settle into his race and not have to worry about David right on his back door the whole time. Pedro is all over Kyle Macedo. You can see that up ahead. He's keeping the pressure on Kyle. Let's see some of the other battles that are going on. There's a lot of them going on right now. We've got Eve Barrios. He's, uh, one of, I keep saying Barrios or Barrios. I don't know which one to go with. He's not far behind David Macedo right now. So this is the view from 7th place. That's David who we were just riding with up ahead there. So he's under threat now from one of our new drivers in the uh, Ferrari. So we'll see what what this new guy has to offer as far as speed. Uh, he's looking pretty racy right now. Putting in some good laps. Behind him, he's got another new driver, Gabriel Macedo not related to David and Kyle Macedo, who are brothers. So we have three Macedos, but only two of them are related. Um, so Gabriel, let's take a look on board with Gabriel. This is his view from behind Eve here. And then behind him is Stefan Buckley, who we know is, is another fast driver. So. A lot of competition, a lot of you know battles going on, guys trying to set clean laps and keep their race pace up because they're all kind of under threat. Even even Stefan here, right behind him is Andrew Cooper. So now we're on board with Cooper. That's Stefan Buckley up ahead, Gabriel Macedo ahead of him, and then Eve Barrios up ahead of him. So 
pack hasn't really moved that that wide yet. As you can see, we can just go down the line here. Uh, it's just one after the other. So anybody makes a mistake, they're going to lose some positions uh, pretty quickly. And then Ken North is just behind. Just behind that, and that's 12th place. So from we just went from third all the way to 12th place, and these guys are all right close to each other. Whoa, almost into the back of uh, Peaks there. It looks like Ken North just made a move on who was that? There was a slow car there. Green and black McLaren. Oh, that is uh, Coleman. I don't know his first name. D. Coleman. So Coleman's struggling for pace a little bit, but staying but staying out of people's way. So that's good. He's he's letting everybody go. He's struggling for pace a little bit. But this is, I believe, this is his first ever uh, league race, and possibly one of his first. Uh, competitive races ever so you know happy to see him just putting in some laps and getting some experience very valuable experience no doubt it's stressful having these guys come flying around you like that but you can learn a lot even in that scenario you can learn a lot as a driver so you see Ken here we're riding on board in the Lamborghini now I know from driving both that going from the BMW and going to the Lamborghini, that is a big difference. There, there's a pretty wide gap in how those two cars drive. So Ken is he's bitten off quite a quite a challenge taking on the Lamborghini. It can be a finicky car. We've had drivers in the past who dro drove this car and you know had some some pretty bad issues with losing the rear end of the car. It can be temperamental. So. But a lot of that has to do with setup and driving style. Ken's a pretty smooth, consistent driver, so I'm sure he'll be able to figure it out. All right, let's get back to the front and just take a look at what's going on up here. We've got Jon Snow still, oh, he's comfortably in the lead. He's over four seconds ahead of Moda now. So Moda, either John has cranked the speed up or Moda has, no, Moda's keeping his lead, so it's not that Moda has slowed down. I think John has just settled in and really started to to pull away. Um, you see his fastest lap of the race was a 144.290. That's a very fast lap. By comparison, 145.0 for Moda. So that's eight-tenths of a second different. That's a, that's a pretty big difference right there, so... That's why John has pulled away. He's setting some really fast laps. Back behind Moda, we've got Doherty here in third. He's still in no man's land, looks like. He's got a pretty comfortable lead over. Well, it's showing David Macedo. David somehow got back past uh, Pedro and Kyle Macedo. So we missed that. I wonder probably not worth going back to try to find out where that happened looks like it happened a little bit ago but so he found his way back past these guys and he's up into fourth again trying to hunt down Mike Doherty to get back into that battle he had going for third place but the problem is Mike is now 6.8 seconds ahead of him so it's a pretty big gap to to bring down Kyle having a good race running in the top five. He missed most of last season, so we're glad to have him back with us this season. Pedro, consistent as ever. He's become one dangerous driver. He set the fastest lap a few times in some of the events that we had uh, in the off season, and I think it scared some of these guys that Pedro was getting so fast uh, because when we started in season one, Pedro was a complete newbie. He lacked experience and, and wasn't very fast. He was consistent, but he didn't really have speed. Now he's got speed to go with that consistency, so he's a pretty dangerous driver at this point. And here we see Stefan Buckley putting the challenge on uh, Eve Berrios here. 
Berrios got a little bit of damage on the front of that Ferrari. Not sure what happened there, but he looks like he made contact with somebody or maybe the wall. Still running in seventh place. Don't see a lot of damage on these cars. It's been a pretty clean race so far, so not sure what happened to uh, to Eve here, but he's running pretty well right now, staying in front of Buckley. Buckley's trying to give him everything he has right now. You see Barrios get a little too much of the bumper right there and throw him off the line a little bit. Right behind this, Gabriel Macedo, he's dealing with a lot of pressure from Andrew Cooper. A lot of pressure there. Andrew and the McLaren looking pretty racy right now. You see the time splits between these guys, 0.4 seconds, 0.9 seconds, 0.8 seconds. You know, these guys are all running really close together. Peaks is running in 11th place right now, but he's really not that far behind the guys in the top five. I mean, everybody's still running pretty close together. As the race goes on, they'll spread out a little more. You see a little bit of damage on Peaks' car on the right side there, just a little bit. At least I think that's damage. That could actually be part of the design, I'm not sure. Uh, then behind him is Ken North. Ken doesn't have any threat from behind so that's kind of where the gap opens up yeah right behind him is Scott Taylor but he's 23 seconds back so there's a gap between 12th and 13th that's a pretty large gap so the top 12 are all if you look at the splits here they're all mostly less than a second very close splits for most of these guys then there's a big gap to 13th where you've got Scott Taylor and Scott He's kind of running by himself right now. The closest person to him is 5.4 seconds behind, so he's got some room. You see a little damage on his car, too. Um, not sure what happened there, but after that is Cole Bennett. Cole's kind of running by himself right now. He's 5.5 behind Scott Taylor, and he is... Whoa, you see him get a little loose there, able to hold on to it. And then you see Johnson Liu. Now, Johnson was kind of the story uh, for a couple of races last season because he started dead last, and he uh, gained like 10 positions throughout the course of the race and uh, showed blistering speed, really good job of passing people. He just was in attack mode the entire race. You know, I didn't honestly pay attention to where he started this race, uh, as far as where he was on the grid because I was so busy worrying about all the new drivers So I'm not sure where Johnson started, but he's running in 15th right now So we know he's really fast and can be Really aggressive in that Porsche. So we'll try to keep an eye on him to see where he goes. We got behind him is Jamie Morrison Jamie Looks like he's got a little bit of damage on the front of that BMW also yeah, he does, for sure. So I'm not sure what happened there. Behind him is Evan Miller. Behind him is Cavillo. So these guys are spaced out a little more back here. James Parks. DJ Young. Nick Driveman. Oh, Nick Driveman is in the pits. And D. Coleman, David Coleman. And David's getting passed by Alex Motor right now, who's running in second. So David is, he's, uh, he's fighting it like a warrior out there. He's got a little bit of damage on the front of that McLaren. And uh, just 
just keeping it on the track, doing a good job of that. So let's check back up at the front. So we got John Snow, who's now 5.9 seconds ahead of Moda. So he's pulled a pretty good gap on Moda. And this is uh, something we've seen a lot of. We've seen John check out of a lot of races in the first two seasons of this league. Uh, but we've also seen other people do it. We've seen Mike uh, Doherty pull away and, and run away with races, and we've seen uh, Mike Wojcik run away with some races. So we've seen it before. It's definitely not not only John who does this, but John has been really, really consistently dominant the last uh, last half of last season especially. he uh, If it wasn't for a couple of key wins by Wojcik, uh, John would have ended up being the champion for two seasons in a row. He uh, just barely missed it last season, so not anything new to see him running up in the front and putting on a great show. And then we've got Moda running in second. He's now six seconds behind. And you see Doherty, he's 11.4 seconds behind Moda, so Moda's not under any threat from Doherty at all. Um, and you see right back there, there was David Macedo. So David Macedo has now got the lead down to 4.2 seconds to Mike Doherty. So he's trying to run Mike down and get back on him like he was earlier. Uh, of course, pit strategy is going to come into play here also. Uh, there is one major change for this season. This season, uh, tire changes are mandatory in all of our se or both of our seasons prior to this. Tire changes and, and fuel were both optional. You did have to pit. You had to pit, but you could literally just pull into your box, put the car up on the jacks, drop it right back down, and take off. You could just quick pit and not take fuel, not take tires, run the whole race on one set of tires, and start the race with enough fuel to finish the whole race. And so a lot of guys did that. A lot of people didn't take tires and didn't take fuel. And so we kind of ended up with two groups. We ended up with a group of drivers who never took tires and, you know, ran the race like an endurance race. And then we took we had another group of drivers <clears throat> who felt like they had to take tires uh, and were really faster in the second half of the race, but they had a ton of time to make up because of the length of their pit stop. And we felt like that kind of hurt. The competitive balance a little bit I mean it was it was very interesting and it was fun seeing the different pit strategies and different things that guys did but uh, we decided this season to go with everybody has to take tires so everybody will be running two sets of tires uh, so effectively everybody will be having the same length of pit stop unless they have damage or if they take a lot of fuel but if they're just taking tires, the pit, the pit stop should be about the same length for everyone. So that'll kind of balance things out a little bit. We'll see how it goes for this season. And, of course, if it needs to be tweaked for next season, we would do that. But uh, the pit lane, unfortunately, in the replay, it does not show me when pit lane is open. So we will have to just kind of keep an eye on that. And we'll try to sort it out. Uh, as everybody starts pitting. I know the guy that we're watching right now, David Macedo, is usually the last one to pit, so we won't be watching him because if we're watching him, everybody else will have already pitted. And so we'll keep an eye on some of these other guys. We have some people who pit earlier. In fact, right here, Pedro is all the way back in 16th place, and that is because he has already pitted. So... We are on lap 15 out of 30, I think we're running 34 laps tonight, yeah, so 15 out of 34, so we're at the halfway point of the race, so some guys have already started to pit, let's take a look, we got Pedro who's down to 16th, but it's because he's already pitted, you got Ken North here who's in 18th, but he no doubt has already pitted as well. So some of this is going to shake its way back out. You got Berrios back here in 20th. He was up up in the top 10. So some of these guys have already pitted. They're trying to take advantage of an undercut, see if they can undercut some of the guys in front of them. 
So the different strategies are still going to be in play. Some people will pit earlier, some people will pit later, but in the end everybody has to run two sets of tires. So we'll see how that all comes, you know, to a to a head at the end of the race. So the way we run is we run an hour long race. Uh, 20 minute pit window in the middle so you have 20 minutes of racing then the pit window opens for 20 minutes and then after it closes you got 20 more minutes of racing so that's the format we've ran from day one it served us very well it's made for some really great racing and a lot of freedom of choice for the drivers and a lot of you know competitive choices they can make throughout the course of the race so we want to give them as much choice as possible and let them kind of tinker with strategy and different different things and we've had good success with that so you see John here we're going to take a ride with John just take a ride around Barcelona he's coming around here you see somebody heading into the pits right there he's coming around the final turn down the front stretch so we're going to ride along for one lap here with the fastest guy on the track. So you see some people coming out of the pits up ahead. See how fast John is closing down. That looks like Stefan Buckley right ahead of him right there. So Stefan has already pitted. You see John doesn't show He's not showing any signs of problems with his tires. Uh, he's still very smooth in and out of the turns. He's not fighting the car at all. Uh, looks really good. So John is one of the drivers who uh, basically never took tires uh, the last couple of seasons. He he got to a point where he figured out he could not take tires and drive you know, smoothly and take care of his tires and actually finish the race faster on one set of tires than he could on two. So this might actually make drivers like John faster as well because now that they know that they have to take tires, they can push the first the first half of the race a little harder and use their tires up a little bit more and they're going to get a fresh set so they can push the car a little harder drive a little more on the edge and then change them you know halfway through the race and get a fresh set of tires so it could actually make some of these guys even faster having that knowledge that they're going to get another set of tires so, so that's one lap uh, around Barcelona kind of talked all the way through it sorry about that but uh, Barcelona is a is very much a rhythm track it's got these slow sweeping turns and if you're good at getting into a rhythm and a flow uh, it's a pretty good track for that you know it doesn't have a lot of really frustrating turns, just a lot of sweeping turns. You see John making his way past Stefan Buckley there. Buckley smartly lets him go. So you see John here. We are on lap 18 right now. 17 in the books. We're on the 18th lap. Let's see if he pits this time around. You know we're running 34 laps tonight, so we're at the halfway mark of the race right now. If you were trying to maximize the amount of time that you had fresh tires, pitting right around the halfway point would pretty much maximize it the best you can. So we'll see if that's what John is thinking or if he's wanting to stay out a little bit longer here. going to go in. So John's coming in. Looks like he is behind. I'm not sure who that is in front of him. We see a few penalties on the board here. We got Gabriel Macedo with a drive through. Jamie Morrison and DJ Young both have 30 seconds stop and goes. Those are those are pit violations. Speeding in pit lane. Uh, 
it's a frustrating thing to have happen when you're having a good race. You know, some of these guys are having pretty good races. I know Jamie was having a pretty good race. and That kind of stuff will drive you crazy because you do everything else pretty well and then you you know you mess up on your pit stop but that's something these guys are going to have to work on and everybody's done it we've seen some of our best fastest drivers make that exact same mistake so it's not it's not anything that hasn't happened to me and everybody else in the league we've all done it so uh, but that's something they can work on and it'll make them uh, even faster once they get that kind of stuff straightened out so let's see we've got Moda is in the pits with Jon Snow, so that's going to give David Macedo the lead of the race right now. And Kyle Macedo, who is 6.8 seconds behind him, is going to jump up into second place. It looks like Doherty has already pitted, so... Doherty's currently running in 6th place. You see Evan Miller right now all the way up in the 7th. But that vi that's probably because he has not pitted yet. You see Pedro behind him in 8th. Uh, Pedro pitted early. He was one of the earlier guys to pit. So he's just waiting for the guys in front of him to take their pit stop so he can gain some positions back. We know Stefan has already pitted. He's running in ninth right now. Uh, I think on Andrew Cooper has already pitted as well. So some of this is all going to sort itself out. We're going to take a look at David. Now we know David. I, I didn't know if this kind of approach would work with the new uh, mandatory tire change. Because before, when we didn't... Uh, force guys to take tires. David would not take tires. He would run one set of tires for the entire race and because it really didn't matter because it was the same set of tires either way he would pit extremely late in the pit window. He would wait right to the very end and then pit. And uh, he actually gained a lot of positions by doing that a few times and it actually helped him quite a bit. But I didn't think that would work with the new rules because now all the time he spends staying out on older tires all the guys who've already pitted are setting faster laps because they're on new tires so I really didn't think that I would see this uh, with the new rules but here we are we got the Macedo brothers uh, both staying out doing the same thing that they used to do in the old pit strategy so we'll see how it works out for them um, these guys like to get their money's worth out of that first set of tires, that's for sure. They, uh, they've always pitted late. They pushed it right to the limit uh, on several occasions where they waited till the very last minute. And you see John. John was so far <clears throat> ahead of everybody that even with him already pitting, he's still in third place. So he's just waiting for the guys ahead of him to pit so he can retake the lead. So he's effectively in the lead of the race right now. It's just not showing on the scoreboard yet. But John has uh, dominated pretty heavily tonight. So, <clears throat> And then Alex is right behind him. He's about seven seconds behind John. But he was pretty dominantly in second place. So when this all sorts out... Uh, I expect Alex will be right back in a comfortable spot in second. So let's take a look at David here, see if he's going to pit anytime soon. We know last season David drove the Aston Martin, uh, probably basing that decision partially off of 
the performance he saw Mike Doherty have with the Aston Martin in season one. I mean, anybody who watched Mike Doherty in season one would definitely think, like, man, I want to drive that car. Like, that guy, he's consistent, he's fast, it looks, it's supposed to be one of the easier cars to drive. Uh, but from talking to David about it, I don't think he liked the Aston Martin very much at all. It struggles so bad out of the corners, and when you first get onto straights, really, you know, you have to keep it in lower gears all the times to keep the power band up, and it was a little bit of a challenge for him. He was really, really fast in the Bentley the year before, or the season before. In season one, David was extremely fast in the Bentley. And then he started getting faster and faster towards the end of the season as he figured out the Aston Martin last season. But I just don't think he liked that car very much. Um, now we see him in the BMW, which I think is a little more balanced and probably feels a little more like the Bentley. So he's probably going to be more at home in the BMW, I would imagine. But uh, you see, he's still, still out here leading the race right now. 21 laps in the books. Okay, so Kyle pitted on that lap. So Kyle has finally pitted. We're going to see where he comes out after his pit stop. There's some cars passing him, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, that's Pedro. So that is for position right there. Pedro just passed Kyle Macedo. Um, and those two have been battling all race long. So that no doubt is a sucker punch for Kyle. He's like, oh my gosh, here we go again. He's, <laughs> he's behind Pedro once again. Those guys have been battling all race long, so Pedro just beats him out on the uh, on the outlap. So now that battle is going to resume. You see Scott Taylor. Oh my goodness, Scott almost got a hold of Kyle right there, really close to an incident. Good thing they didn't come together right there. Really, really close to a big mistake by one of those guys, or maybe both of them. I'm not sure who that would have been on the fault of, but really close there. You see Scott, he is racing, let's see, is that for position? No, it's not. I'm not sure who that is in the blue Honda. Who, who is in that blue Honda? Oh, wait, it is. Yes, that is for position. I'm sorry. That's Nick Driven. He is right behind... He is right behind Scott Taylor, so that was actually for position. These guys are battling for 17th place, and the guys right in front of them, Kyle Macedo and Pedro Perez, they're battling for 5th place. So that's two separate battles going on right in close proximity to each other. And you see these guys making their way past some lap traffic here. A lot of cars on the track tonight, so there's more of this going on than maybe some of these guys are used to. A little more lap traffic, a little, little more to deal with throughout the race. And then up here we've got Mike Doherty. He's dealing with some lap traffic right now. And David finally pitted. So when David pitted, he came out 6.3 seconds behind Doherty. He's on fresher tires than Doherty but he's back up over six seconds behind Mike. So he's got his work cut out for him. Right behind him is Pedro and, so Pedro almost caught both of the Macedos on their pit stops. So Pedro having a really good race. We'll see what kind of pace David has. It seems like his pace has gotten better as the race has gone on. He had that one off the track incident where he almost got into the back of Doherty and that cost him quite a bit of time. He's been pretty fast all race long, so we'll see if Pedro has anything for him or if David's just going to run away and go run down Doherty. And then 
after that we've got Stefan Buckley running in seventh. It doesn't show me how far behind he or there it is. He's 15.2 seconds behind Kyle, so there's a pretty big gap there. Uh, Andrew Cooper is 6.6 .6 seconds behind him, so that's a pretty decent gap. 3.5 seconds behind that is Ken North, so Ken has found his way into the top 10. He's running in ninth right now. Eve Berrios is back to 10th, so having a good first race with us. He was up in the top 6, I think, at one point, but that little bit of damage that he had on his car, I think he had a little bit of an incident. Uh, wasn't able to catch it on camera, but something happened that cost him a couple of positions there. Um, Peaks is running in 11th. He's having a good race. Still has damage on the front of that Beamer, but holding his position pretty well. And then Gabriel Macedo is 20 seconds behind him, so Peaks is pretty comfortable in that 11th spot. Got a big gap there. Things are a little more spread out back here. You see uh, Cavilla is right behind Cole Bennett. Oh, the Cavilla is off the track right there. He's having a little bit of an issue. In fact, I'm not sure what happened there. It looked like he just got hung up on the bumper a little bit and it pulled him off the track. So Cavilla currently running in 14th. Evan Miller has held pretty steady in his position. He's been around that 12 to 15 section of the group all night long having a pretty good race. I mean, you can't feel bad about it. I mean, I know when you go to start a race, you don't think, man, I, I hope I get 15th. But when you're racing, the when you got 14 guys in front of you that are this fast, you got to feel pretty good about 15th. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. So these guys in front of him are all having great races. So uh, you see James Parks, he's moved his way up to 16th there. So he's doing well. Scott Taylor behind him. He's only 1.7 off of Parks, so we'll keep an eye on that. And then after that, everything spreads out quite a bit. We got Nick Driveman back here. He's serving a drive through penalty. That's probably for track limits. Usually a drive through is a track limit thing. So that's probably what that's all about right there. And then Jamie Morrison. Jamie had an issue with his pit stop and got a penalty. Otherwise, he probably would have finished uh, quite a bit further up in the field. But just trying to finish strong now. And you see, that is Jon Snow uh, behind him right there. That's the leader. So Jon has just been steadily passing people all night long uh, from that first position. We see DJ Young here in that bright pink Audi. DJ, I believe, was in a white or a, no, he was in a, I think it was a blue and orange Porsche, if I remember right, last season. That was his, it was either white and orange or blue and orange. I think it was blue and orange Porsche last season. And, uh, so some of these guys, you get, you, you, you get used to seeing them in the same car race after race. You see Johnson Lou back here in 21st place. Not sure what happened to him, but he's dropped back several positions. Maybe there was a few people who got pit penalties. Maybe he was one of them. Not sure. Uh, and then we got Silva and Coleman who are rounding out the top 23. So we've lost a couple people. We know Wojcik disconnected and we lost one other driver. So we're down to 23 now. But uh, still a pretty good number to finish the race. You see Snow making his way past here, just keeping that blazing pace that he's had all night. Moda, 10.8 seconds behind him, but he's 13.5 seconds ahead of Mike Doherty. So Moda has had a really great race. If John had made any kind of a mistake, Moto would be leading this race right now, but John hasn't really made any mistakes, so John's comfortably in the driver's seat out in first, out in front, and uh, 
we don't we don't really expect John to make mistakes because he really just doesn't. But you know, anything can happen. We've seen uh, even even Mr. Snow make mistakes in the pit lane. Everybody's done that. We've all done it. So sometimes sometimes you forget to be in first gear and you forget to hit the button or sometimes you accidentally hit the button twice and turn it off in speed we've all done it. it it's just part of racing and when you watch guys that are getting paid tons of money in real life to race they speed in pit lane too so it's just part of racing um, but see let's see doherty here now doherty he's He's not by himself necessarily anymore because Musito has it under four seconds. You see David back there in that red and blue BMW. He's got it under four seconds. He's got about eight laps, seven or eight laps to finish this race on podium. He's currently running in third, but we know David had better pace than him earlier and was all over him in that Audi and you see Mike is still let's take a look on board with Mr. Doherty here it seems like he's struggling to keep the car on the apex of a lot of these turns you see him having this right there having to let off to keep from going wide just struggling a little bit with the slow speed grip we know when we were riding along with David earlier, that's where David was eating him up, was in the slow corners. Uh, but one thing we know from two seasons of racing with him is Mike Doherty is one hell of a driver, so... He's going to figure this car out the same way he figured out the BMW last year and the Aston Martin the season before. He, uh, he's one of those guys that he's fast and no matter what he's driving. I mean, even with him struggling through the slower turns a little bit tonight, he's still running in third place uh, in a really fast race with a lot of really fast drivers. So Mike's just fast all the way around, but definitely seems like the car is not cooperating as well as we've seen some of these other guys. Some of, you know, John is like a setup guru. His car always looks like it's, you know, stapled to the track, like it just doesn't move. It stays right where he wants it. So really good with setup and driving style. They worked well together. You see Mike dealing with these three guys here in front of him. That is, let's see, that's DJ Young. In front of him is Cavilla. And in front of Cavilla is, I think that's Cavilla. DJ Young, Cavilla. I'm trying to think who that other car would be. I'm honestly not sure who that other car is. Oh wait, that's Cole Bennett. So that's actually for position right there. That's Cole Bennett in the Audi. You see Cavilla letting Doherty go here. And now he's going to try to get back on his speed, on his pace, so that he can catch up to Cole Bennett when Cole slows down to let Doherty go. You see the blue flag there telling Cole. You got a faster driver, one of the leaders behind you. It's time to let him go. Let's jump on board with David and see how far behind he is. He's not far behind. Okay, so he's he's trying to get past Cavillo right now. He's going to do that right there. So he's past Cavillo now. You see Doherty up ahead on the inside. And Cole Bennett lets him go. David Macedo, see somebody out off the track back there sitting in the sand, not sure who that was, we're going to stay right here though, we're going to see what goes on here, so Cole Bennett's kind of in a sandwich between two of the leaders, he's got two guys behind him that are racing him for position, so he's trying to be strategic about when he lets these guys get past him.
David's going to look down the inside here. Gets up alongside Cole there, and Cole's going to let him go. So that's a good move by Cole. Let it go. Get back to race and do a race. And that's going to put Cavilla right back on Cole Bennett. So it's all back the way that it should be now. DJ, not sure what happened to DJ. He fell back quite a bit. He was right with these guys, but he's not actually racing them for position, I don't think so. I think that was just by a chance that he was with these guys. So you see Cavilla back on Bennett. We'll keep an eye on that battle, but we're going to keep a closer eye on this battle, which is for third place. David has finally ran Mike Doherty down. He's had faster pace than Doherty pretty much the entire race. He's caught him at least twice, maybe three times, because he caught him early. In the, I think he was ahead of him at one point early in the race, but he's caught him twice that we've seen uh, during the race after after being uh, quite a ways behind him. So he's got faster pace than Doherty. Now it's just a matter of making his way past him. We've got about five laps to go. So this is four podium with five laps to go. This is a pretty big moment for both of these guys. Now, Doherty is a very fair driver. He's the kind of guy that if somebody beats him, he's the first one to congratulate them on beating him. He's a really gracious guy, but that doesn't mean he doesn't want third place. Doherty is a he's a he's a driver. He wants he wants to win, just like everybody else on the track. So nice as he might be, he's hoping he can hold David at bay right here. You see David trying to get alongside. Still eating him up in these slow corners quite a bit. Doherty's holding his own in the slow corners a little better now than he was earlier in the race. But still, oh, you see Doherty runs a little wide there. That's going to let David get alongside. But David's going to be on the outside, side by side through the chicane. And David's going to pull off the pass there. That's some good hard racing by both of these guys. Doherty just made a little mistake and left the door open. David was able to get alongside, and then it's just all about respect. Respect for the guy next to you. Running too wide through a chicane is not easy to do in any circumstance, but you see how good these guys are. They were able to pull that off. And now we fully expect that David will pull away from him because he's had better pace than Mike pretty much all day long. It, it, it really... It hasn't been that close between these two guys. Mike just doesn't quite have the pace of the top three. And he was... The thing about Mike is he's consistent enough and he's good enough with his pit stop and everything else and his, his, in, his in lap and his out lap. You know, all the things that you have to do well to be a good driver. Mike was good enough that even though he didn't have the pace of the three guys that are now in front of him, he was still in third place, even despite that. So it just shows how good of a driver he really is. But he's definitely going to have to do some tweaking on that BMW, I th or on the Audi, excuse me, on that Audi to uh, to get where he's on the same pace as these guys because he's, he's struggling a little bit in certain sections of the track. So, But then again, we're looking at Jon Snow. We all know how fast Jon is. Alex Moto, we've all known how fast Alex is. Alex is a, he's a perennial top three guy. Like, he's always top three, top four. He's always up in the front. Never fails. And this new pit strategy of forcing everybody to take tires, that's going to play into Alex's, uh, his benefit more than probably anybody else on the track because Alex in the Porsche could not make it work with one set of tires. So he was always taking tires and then running people down and passing them at the end of the race in the in the previous seasons. So now he's not going to have to do that. Now, if he runs a great race like he has tonight, everybody else had to take tires too. So he's easily in second. He's comfortable up in second. So this is gonna it's gonna work out for Alex quite quite well actually. And uh, you see David, he's 21.3 seconds behind Alex, so there's not really any threat there. Moto is. 14.2 seconds behind Jon Snow. No threat there. 
Mike Doherty is already 1.6 behind David, so I don't think he's going to have anything for David here in the final laps. Uh, Kyle is 6.7 seconds behind Doherty. Now, he has pulled away from Pedro. Uh, he, he found his way past Pedro. We missed that. Uh, I hate that we missed it, but I, I think it was quite a while ago because you can see Kyle's quite a ways ahead of Pedro. Pedro once again. Pedro finished sixth in the points, and he missed two races, I think, last season, and he still finished sixth in points uh, last season. So um, here he is sixth in an even bigger field of cars, an even faster field of cars. So that's about where we expect him to be, somewhere around that top five. You know, he's got the speed now that he can he can reach up to those levels with the fastest guys in the group. So we're going to take a look back through the field. So Stefan Buckley did settle in at seventh place after everybody's pit strategies all sorted themselves out. So he's having a great race. He's, he's been racing really well. He ran some people down early and made some passes. He's up in the top ten in the seventh. Andrew Cooper, I don't know. I wasn't there in the off offseason. Uh, I've been away. So I'm not sure if Andrew has run with these guys very much in the off season, or if this is... I know this is his first official race with us, the first points race, and he's in eighth place, and he's in a very fast top ten. So the fact that he's got eighth in his first race with us is uh, pretty damn impressive. Behind him is Ken North. Ken North, you know, last season was, you know, perennial fifth place guy, fourth place guy. He was up in the top five or right there at it pretty much every race last season so he's he's no slouch either and he's running in ninth place right now so that just shows how fast these top 10 guys really are and then another new driver rounding out the top 10 is Eve Berrios uh, he uh, driving the Ferrari has done really really well tonight had a great race and then peaks behind him in 11th. A lot of new drivers right in this section right here. We got 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, and 14th, and 15th. So we've got, let's see, how many is that? That's one, two, three, four, five. Five people in a row that are all new drivers, and they're in the, in the top half of the field. So really, really exciting to see that, see some of these new guys come in and be competitive right off the bat. And we know, for those of you who have been following this league, uh, even the fastest guys in the league that are in the league right now, they didn't start out this fast. Uh, they've all gotten faster as we ran our seasons. Um, even somebody who dominated as much as Jon Snow, when John, when we first started the league, he wasn't this fast. He just, he just wasn't. Uh, he's gotten faster and gotten better, so we expect all these new guys, as uh, time goes on, we expect to see them get faster and faster. Whoa, you see a close call there between, looks like, uh, Gabriel Macedo and Peaks. Now, Macedo looking to the inside there. Peaks still not quite regained his pace. These guys are side by side right now. really close race and this is the battle for 11th. Macedo looking down the inside but that's going to become the outside but he's going to make the pass. He's going to make it stick. So good move by him. Good set of turns by both of those guys to keep off of each other and uh, battle it out like they did. You see David Macedo behind them so that's third place behind these guys right now but they don't care. They're in the middle of a, of a tough battle. They're not really worried about him at the moment. I'm sure they'll have to at some point. But actually, no, they won't. They won't have to worry about him because the race... Let's back it up a little bit here. The race is ending on this lap. So here is Mr. Snow coming down for another victory, taking the final turn down the straight. And he's going to take the checkered flag. We've said that many, many times. So John, with another dominant performance, going to take the win. And then behind him is Alex Moda coming in second. Really, 
a dominant race by Alex Moda. If it wasn't for John, he would have ran away with this thing, but instead he runs away with a comfortable second place finish. And then David Macedo, still still dealing with a lot of traffic from these guys here, but he's not worried about them because he's about to finish the race. So you see behind him that it looks like Mike Doherty. Has Mike caught up that much because of the traffic? I think he has. So a little bit of a, not really a close challenge or anything like that, but that's David there. And then Mike Doherty wasn't too far behind right at the very, very end there. And then Kyle, he's going to come in fifth, so great race by Kyle. Stefan Buckley is going to come in sixth, which is one place bet. Wait, what happened to Pedro? Andrew Cooper is going to finish seventh. Pedro is in the pits. Oh my gosh, I'm being told that Pedro ran out of fuel with three turns to go. So Pedro battled all day long with Kyle Macedo and now he's going to fall back because of running out of fuel at the end of the race. So you see Cooper there finishing 7th. Here comes uh, Barrios. He's going to finish 8th. Pedro is still falling down the running order here so I'm not sure where he's actually going to finish. It's all about laps completed at this point because he didn't complete the final lap. So whoever didn't complete as many laps as him Pedro will finish in front of them but what a heartbreaking way to finish the race there so there's Barrios coming in eighth Ken North coming around the last turn here to finish in ninth and that's the end of the race there so that's all we've got so what we're going to do is what we always do for you guys who have been with us uh, for a long time what we always do is we go back and we watch the beginning of the race again. And uh, we've kind of gotten in the habit of watching it, watching it from the onboard uh, camera from someone. Let's see, who do we want to see? I think we want to see Moda, because Moda is starting in fourth. So Moda is in fourth place. He qualified for see Wojcik in second there in front of him. We know Wojcik is going to lose connection. So I always say uh, for a great race to happen, you have to have a great start. And uh, these guys put on a great show today. A nice clean race. You see the green flag there. John a little slow off the start. That's going to give Wojcik the advantage. Wojcik winning the drag race down the front stretch. You see David here looking to the middle, but he decides to back out of it. Not worth causing a huge pileup on the first turn. John on the inside, here's Moda coming around the outside, riding on the edge of the track right there. He's got David Macedo all over him from behind. And Moda gets a great start, good clean start by everybody on the track. We had a great start for having 25 cars on the track. Unfortunately in sim racing, you just don't see clean starts very often. But these guys have kind of mastered it. We figured out as a group, they show each other respect and take it easy on the first lap. Everybody gets to finish the race. And, and there you see Wojcik shoot off into the sky. He's disconnected. He's out of the race. And now Moda is looking at second place. Can he get Jon Snow? Uh, if you ask Alex in this moment, was he going to be able to get Jon? He probably would have told you no because he's raced against Jon a lot and he has struggled has struggled to beat John a lot, but he's still feeling good about where he's at right now. He's all the way up to second. He had a great start, feeling good. All he's got to do is hope that John makes a mistake, whether it's in the pits or takes a takes a turn too wide and ends up off the track or something to give Moda that shot to win the race. But even with with this, you see in the rear view, Moda has already gapped the guys behind him. That's Doherty and David Macedo behind him back there. He's already gapping them, so he's had a great start to the race. And uh, and we know how it went from there. A great race by these guys. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Uh, excited for season three. We, you know, this is just just one out of eight races, so there's going to be eight races as always. Um, we next week we'll be at Zandvoort. Uh, Zandvoort, Zandvoort is. 
one of my favorite tracks now. After we ran it last season, I kind of fell in love with it. That's why I decided to run it again this season. Great track. Uh, really, really good uh, setting for a second race on the season like this. These guys are going to have a lot of fun with it. The speed of the racing that we have this season is really impressive. And uh, I can't wait to see what they can do around Xanthor. That'll be really fun to watch. But uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for joining us. And uh, if you subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, do whatever you want to do to try to keep in touch with us so that you can watch each race week after week as they come out. Uh, we very much like to have you. Thanks again for watching. Y'all have a great week.